Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's the return of the black hoodie. So today's going to be a video. Uh, I think it's going to be vlog style slash sit down review, depending on how it goes. I've decided this year that I would like to find out some of my family members and friends like favorite books of all time and read them and talk about them in videos. I'm trying to read them like during their birthday months, which um, I, I think <laughs> would be fun and appropriate. So uh, the first video that I'm doing today, you can tell by the thumbnail probably, is Surrounding the Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. April is my dad's birthday month. To be fair, it's also my husband's birthday month, but like his favorite books are like financial nonfiction, like advice books. And like, I probably won't read a book for him. So <laughs> I just, I, I can't do that to myself. But when I asked my dad what some of his favorite books were, and this was on the list, a Ray Bradbury, I was like, oh, perfect. Um, but a few of the other books that he mentioned one of them was The Stand by Stephen King, which I've already read that twice in my life, so I'm not going to read it again right now. Another one was Dreamcatcher by Stephen King, and that's not up on my chronological uh, read through just yet. I've got a few more to go. I think he also mentioned I, Robot, um, which is, I'm so picky about sci-fi stuff. I wasn't really feeling that. But then when I saw him put The Martian Chronicles, uh, I got excited because I love Ray Bradbury uh, and I don't know what I was expecting when he told me what his favorite books were but like they make sense. I when I think about like things that my dad likes I know he likes Star Trek and Star Wars and like science fiction stuff. Him and my mom were watch always watching like the X-Files when I was growing up and that's where like I learned about the show from and everything so his selections make sense. So the Martian Chronicles is actually a collection of short stories about, I think, like the colonization or people like just living on Mars. Uh, so far, I have read the... Oh, I'm getting an important phone call. All right, I kind of forget where I was. I uh, Technically, Penny, our new puppy, is a foster right now, but we're finalizing her adoption. So anyways, The Martian Chronicles. Um, collection of short stories. I read the introduction and the very first story, which was Rocket Summer. And it's like a little vignette. And that's one of the things that I really like about Ray Bradbury's writing, especially like in something like Dandelion Wine. It's like a bunch of little short stories that mix together to make a larger story. Um, but this, like when I think of Ray Bradbury, and I know I've mentioned this in other videos, I'm sure, um, but I think of like science fiction and even in the introduction to this book, he claims his stuff is fantasy. Um, it says, you know, like why is the Martian Chronicles described as science fiction? It misfits that description. There is only one story in the entire book that obeys the laws of technological physics, which is there will come soft rains. Um, and then in this book, that I read recently and have talked about in other videos. Bradbury talks about um, science fiction is the art of the possible and fantasy is the art of the impossible. So while most people would say that The Martian Chronicles is a piece of science fiction, he would say it's a work of fantasy because there's an atmosphere and people walking around without helmets and the mountains are blue and that's why it's fantasy. So I thought that was really uh, interesting because as soon as you throw space in there, or like the future, um, I think of science fiction. Uh, and then, so I read the first little short story, Rocket Summer, which like I said, was just like a little vignette. And honestly, I just wanted to highlight like this entire opening section. Um, and it was just less, it was like a page long. And so I'm going to work my way through these short stories. They, they've got like the layout of them. Uh, and they take place in the year 2030 through the year 2057, which is crazy because when he first wrote this, I don't know, like in the 40s or something, or the 50s. Yes, most of these stories are from the 40s and 50s. Like this 2030 was so far in the future for him, but for us, it's, 
you know, only a few years away. So it's going to be really interesting to see um, maybe where we compare in our technology and space travel and just lifestyle compared to like what he was writing about back then, like for these stories. Um, I am excited. I'm looking forward to it. So follow me around along as I read these stories. I don't know. I might come back and just do like sit down check-ins and yeah, talk about more Ray Radbury, which I do all the time anyways. Okay, so while I'm here, sitting here going to film a few videos, I'm going to give you a little update on the Martian Chronicles. I'm on page 66. I have read one, two, three, four, five, six stories or vignettes or whatever. And I am really liking this. The first one was only like a page long and it was called Rocket Summer. And I don't know if it was published somewhere else, but it just seemed super familiar. Um, so basically what we're getting throughout these stories, they're connected, but uh, it's not like, it doesn't like flow like one into the other. They're like chopped up short stories that are all related somehow. And so basically Mars is populated with human like people, beings and they're walking around there's oxygen like you're able to breathe and it looks like i don't know like the 1920s so you've got a couple different exhibitions going up there i just read the story the third expedition and so rockets of people are coming from earth like traveling through space landing on mars and then finding this civilization in one of these stories the spacemen uh space travelers from earth they get to mars and the people there are people they know who have passed away but they look the same age as when they passed away they're living in this like white picket fence like uh, i don't know like le like just this <laughs> i don't know like american dream perfect little 19 20s to 1950s like situation thing but it's not what it seems <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything but I am definitely really enjoying this I am highlighting a bunch of things of course and I really just love the style of like the little vignettes and the short stories that connect together this type of short story collection works way more for me than um, a short story collection that isn't connected that doesn't make up a larger novel and um, a lot of short story collections that I read have themes or something like they're all ghost stories or things of that sort um, but when they are all somewhat connected in different ways and are thrown together to create this bigger overall world and stuff really works a lot better for me uh, enjoyment wise than just a bunch of different stories that aren't related that don't make up a bigger story so yeah I've got um, quite a bit more to go I've got like 200 pages left but I enjoy just picking it up and reading one or two stories at a time and yeah Ray Bradbury he's a genius and another thing like, I've been highlighting some stuff that I think is, like, um, I don't know, not him, like, predicting things, but it's talking about, like, uh, oh, all the rich people want to go to space because Earth is ruined and stuff, and I'm not, like, a conspiracy theorist, but, like, all these rich people are going to space now. Like, it's just, it's, um, it's interesting, so... I'm really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun and I will update you once I read some more. So I'm here with my final check-in for the Martian Chronicles because I finished it and no surprises. I loved it. A little bit of a surprise because like I've said before, sci-fi and space is not really my thing. Futuristic type things are not really my thing, but I loved it. I love his prose, of course. And like I said previously, this is a collection of short stories. Some of them are super short, like vignettes. And basically it takes place from the year 2035 to the year 2057. 
and um, we are Earthlings people. Humans are colonizing Mars because of many different factors. Um, Earth being ruined, war, atomic bombs, um, people just wanting to get away from um, like certain politics and religious things and laws and stuff and kind of like if you think about like people like wanting to live off grid or whatever so a lot of these people are going to mars because they want to start again so we're following a few different expeditions we follow a few different people who are like rich people who go there to live there um space travelers spacemen astronauts we follow a few of them we find out about martians that live there who um can change form change the way they look there's some creepiness in here uh, there's a lot of heartbreak. Um, I'm pretty sure I already said beautiful prose, of course, it's Ray Bradbury. So I don't think that this first video is much of any type of an experiment because uh, although I read it because it's my one of my dad's favorites, it's one that I was already on my radar because I want to read all of Ray Bradbury's stuff and he's one of my favorite authors. So I wasn't really stepping out of my uh, comfort zone too much, and uh, but seeing his list of books, I mean, he had a couple Stephen King on there, like I said earlier. It just, I think um, him and I have a lot in common when it comes to, you know, like what we liked in some of our favorites. And um, so like, this isn't a surprise. And it probably isn't a surprise to you that I loved it because I always talk about how much I love Ray Bradbury. I of course did a lot of highlighting of commentary on things that are happening now. I spoke in another clip about how all the rich people are running away from Earth and going to Mars or going to space. Um, I highlighted the, the beautiful prose that I liked. I highlighted some things, some connections that I saw. He used the last name Spalding, which I thought was interesting because that's the name of the family in Dandelion Wine and farewell summer so i kind of wonder like if he's trying to connect things there and um this book kind of comes full circle and i won't like tell you what the ending is of the last story but it really hits home and you know that's where it's going but i think ray bradbury did it very well so we've got another five star read it is not my favorite ray bradbury of all time though um but I'm looking forward to reading more of his stuff. He really is the only uh, writer that I've read multiple short story collections from and like enjoyed them thoroughly both times or all time, all the times. What? Yeah, in summary, five stars. Let me know if you've read this. Let me know if you like Ray Bradbury. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I absolutely adore Ray Bradbury. So uh, hopefully I'll have more content surrounding his stuff coming up. Uh, you can probably hear my dog squeaking her toy in the background now, so I'm going to go. But let me know your thoughts on this, and I will see you in my next video.